Hey everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Plant spotlight number four today. We're going to focus on Philodendron Splendid. I kept the blind up today so we've got a little bit of um, you know, bright light coming in. I hope the lighting is going to be okay for the video but I wanted to show you how nice and shiny this plant is. Philodendron Splendid is a hybrid of Philodendron Melanochrysum and Philodendron Vercoisum. Now, of course, whenever we have a hybrid, one of the parentages can be more dominant. Um, so not all Splendids of this world might look the same. Um, but this Splendid, you can identify the parentage quite easily. So, of course, the elongated dark leaves, that's very much coming after the Milano Chrysum parentage. Very distinct, uh, the Verocoisum parentage comes through with these beautiful red backs. And that's really what I love about this plant so much. And these red backs then really cause the front of the leaves to have these really intense veining. Um, it's almost like lime green veining um, and the sinus is also a little bit red. So it's very different to the glorious that I showed you earlier as well. The glorious is just really dark green and has like pale uh, backs. Um, so you can differentiate these two quite easily by the backside of the leaf as well as the petiole. Uh, gloriosum, no sorry, glorious and milano would have smooth petioles whereas vercoisins has really furry petioles and this one is kind of just halfway between both of them. Let me first take you through the journey this Splendid and I have been through and then I'll tell you all about what I've learned about this plant over the last year and a half. It's been pretty much 20 months since I've got this plant. Right, so up on screen you can see what the plant looked like when I just got it as a one leaf cutting in November 2020. I propagated it in just water and then once it had some secondary roots I put it on a moss pole. Now that's something I learned over the last three years if you're not sure whether or not your plant is ready to be potted up just wait a couple more weeks waiting won't hurt the plant so i usually want there to be secondary roots meaning that the main root that is growing has little roots coming off of it um, ideally you would also like your cutting to be rooted in multiple spots not just rely on one large root because what if that root snaps while you're potting it up for example then the plant essentially has no secondary, uh, no second root um, as a backup. So if you're not sure whether or not you can pot up your plant on a moss pole already, the same principles apply like with any other plant that you want to pop, uh, pot up. Make sure it has a root system that is large and healthy enough to sustain the plant in itself. So I would wait for secondary roots and if in doubt, just wait a little bit longer. It won't hurt. I put it on a moss pole in December 2020 and then in January 2021, I noticed the first node attaching itself to the moss pole and then throwing out its first leaf. So that first leaf in January 2021 is really the first one that has a bit of a, you know, splendid vibe to it. So you can see these um, intense veining coming through when the leaf is very new. By March 2021, it's given me another couple of leaves and I can tell that the plant is happy. It's increasing in leaf size. Now, I also want to address the moss pole for a sec. I often get asked, why is your moss pole green? Is it coming back to life? No, that is not the sphagnum moss coming back to life. It's actually algae buildup. Now, algae buildup is not harmful if it's within reason. Of course, once it starts getting a bit slimy and disgusting, it's, it's probably not a good thing, but I haven't really had these experiences outside of pop boxes, uh, to be honest. So that algae is not going to be harmful to your plant. I've heard people say that the algae is going to compete with the plant for nutrients and energy. So the plant is going to suffer, but I'll just let the results speak for themselves. I don't think you need to be too afraid. If anything, I almost take algae as like a good sign. Algae is only going to form if it's warm, moist, and there's nutrients available. So that moss pole, having that algae buildup is actually a sign that I'm doing a good job maintaining the moss pole moisture at all times. I'm doing a good job feeding it and it's getting sufficient light to actually grow. So it's almost like an indicator to me that I'm doing the right thing. But if you don't like the algae buildup, then just don't keep your moss pole as moist, but your plant might also suffer from that a little bit. Just be mindful of that. And yeah, as you can tell by the photos on screen, each leaf after the other in April and May is just continuously increasing. So I know that the spot that I gave it is working for it. I don't need to fix anything. I just need to continue doing what I'm doing. When you want a plant to mature, most importantly, you just need to be consistent with the way that you care for it, with the conditions that you give it, and just give it a bit of time. 
Growing plants is not for the impatient. Uh, it's a hobby that taught me a lot of patience, to be honest. This plant hobby is really challenging me, but it's, it's a good thing, right? It's making me grow as a person. So by July 2021, so about six months into its journey, it then reached the top of its first 90 centimeter pole and I extended it to a full 180 centimeters. Always start your poles with a small plant, have that long-term vision. What's the point in me giving it a tiny pole with just a couple of leaves on it? It's going to reach the top of that tiny pole pretty much immediately. It took it only six months to grow a full 90 centimeter pole. So why would I start with like 20 centimeter and literally extend it every month? With all of the amount of plants I have, I would basically just be extending things nonstop. Also, I don't really think there's a point in extending it a couple of times. With every extension, the pole is going to lose a bit of structural integrity. So I only have one joint between the two uh, poles. It's not really uh, making any impact on the structural integrity of the pole itself. But if you start building your pole based on, you know, five, six different extensions, then you might actually see that the pole is going to become a little bit unstable. By October 21, it then reached the top of its extension as well. And you can see by the photo that still every single leaf is increasing in size. So I know that I'm on the right track. So in October 21, I gave myself a lockdown haircut and then I gave my plant a cut as well, chopping it in half using my chop and extend method. If you're not familiar with the chop and extend method just yet, I will link a playlist at the very end uh, with in-depth tutorials about all things moss pole related. So yeah, on, on screen, I'll put that photo up of those two poles. So I basically took the top half, I potted it up in a new pot and I re-extended it. But you can also see the base pole and you can see how small the leaves are at the bottom of that base pole and then it started slowly increasing uh, and so on. So that base pole is, I actually chopped it into single node cuttings and I then removed all of the moss from the moss pole um, and then I just potted up all of these cuttings in more moss. So if the plant is already growing on the moss pole, I won't then propagate in water. I'll continue growing, uh, I'll continue propagating in moss because that's the medium the roots are already used to. So I just propagated them in moss a little bit further until I start having little shoots on all of them and then I'll just use these to either create another pole or I add these cuttings back to the base to make a lusher pole or I sell them or swap them to you know expand my collection further without having to spend any money so you know I love propagating I say that in every single video but um, you know this method of chop and extending isn't just a great way of getting your plants to mature it's also a great way of you multiplying your plants with um, as little effort as possible. So a couple months after the chop, it's pushing out its first leaf. Um, you can see by the photo on screen that the leaf size hasn't really decreased much, but it took a little while longer for that first leaf to come out. That's also totally normal. The plant is going to focus on growing a root system first. Um, but, you know, overall, I think two months, wait, waiting two months for a new leaf after such a massive chop is actually pretty a pretty short time frame. So I'm really excited um, every time the first leaf comes out and I notice that the plant has not suffered too much from it. So, you know, it just reinforces to me that the methods and the techniques that I'm using is definitely working for the plants in my environment. And yeah, of course, over summer, it really started climbing pretty fast. So by January 2022, it was kind of halfway up its extension pole already. And by April 2022, it reached the top. So it had to go through its second chop and extend. This was the first leaf after the second chop and extend. And this is now the second leaf after the chop and extend. So yeah, you can tell it's kind of continuously growing. It kind of stopped increasing in leaf size. Um, I'm not mad. I think these leaves are still stunning and they're still really nice and large, but it's not really increasing um, consistently anymore. I think there's a couple of reasons for it. Number one, it's currently winter in Australia. So we're probably not blessed with the best conditions uh, for these plants. They definitely prefer, or this plant would definitely prefer spring and summer. But also um, the varicosum kind of took over a little bit and it's kind of right next to my varicosum and it was just being shaded by the varicosum quite a bit. So I think it was just not getting sufficient light to continuously increase, but clearly still sufficient light to continue growing in the same way that it has been growing for the last um, few months. So. I'm not mad about it, but I'm going to try and give it a little bit more light and see if these leaves can get as big as my glorious leaves, because technically they should be, right? With the 
Berghausen and the Milano parentage, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be able to get to the same leaf size as my Glorious, but time will tell and I will definitely keep you updated. Right, so what have I learned about this plant over the last 20 months besides all of these little things that I already mentioned? Hybrids are definitely much easier to care for than their respective species. I haven't had any pest issues with this in 20 months. Somebody also asked me about my Glorious, which I uploaded um, recently. They asked me how, how I deal with pests on them and it made me think about it and my Glorious never had had pests either. So I feel like these um, hybrids are less susceptible to pests. Um, that's that's really great because the Vericosum parent is an absolute spider mite magnet. So I'm actually really surprised that they don't like the Splendid as much as they like the Vericosum because I certainly like both of them. So from a pest perspective, they're pretty easy going. From a humidity perspective, again, all my plants get the same humidity because they're in the same room or all my velvet philodendrons get the same humidity because they're in the same room. So it is definitely thriving between 60 to 70%. Can it deal with something under 60%? It probably can. Um, if it's going to thrive, that's questionable, but I think, you know, worth a try. But the higher you can give the, the higher the humidity as opposed to the more it will thrive. Um, as I said, from a light perspective, it was actually getting more shady conditions and it didn't seem to mind quite that much. But given the Milano parentage, I would assume that if you give it more light, it would size up even quicker. So I'll definitely give that a try going forward. It's a pretty quick climber. It has quite a lot of internodal spacing, so it takes after the Vericosum when it comes to that. So it would even be a good idea to maybe even have a couple of plants on the pole if you want to create a really lush uh, look. And yeah, as I said, these climb up really fast. So this is, I only extended it in April and this is already like uh, the newest node is up here at the moment. So it's already halfway up its extension and we're in winter at the moment so it's definitely a super rapid grower highly highly recommended if you're new to velvet philodendrons start with one of the hybrids the glorious or the splendid don't go into your species straight away um, you can but they're, they're a little bit trickier to to care for and that's really because these hybrids are almost like you know like our friend hannah montana said they get the best of both worlds so it's basically a way of um, I think it's called hybrid vigor. It's basically saying that a hy hybrid plant, you know, has advantages of both of their parents. So it's kind of more resilient to pests. It's easier to grow and so on. So um, definitely no expert, no botanist, no um, whatever, but that's kind of what Wikipedia told me. <laughs> and it makes sense from my own experiences. I can definitely confirm that usually the hybrids are much easier to grow than the species themselves. Temperature wise, it's again in the same room as all the other ones I did before. So no huge difference over here. Um, I don't want it to drop under 18. It could probably survive an under 18, but it's not going to thrive, I believe. Um, I would usually say it's between 20 degrees in winter and maybe 28, 29 in summer. And it definitely appreciates the warmer temperatures in summer. So it doesn't mind that um, at all. Um, but yeah, it kind of just seems to be growing pretty consistently throughout the year, which just tells me that my conditions are probably fairly consistent throughout the year as well. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's all I've really got to say about it. I'm, I hope I don't bore you with this. I hope it's not too repetitive from the plant spotlights that I've done before. I suppose they are very similar plants. There aren't huge differences between the glorious, the splendid, the Vericosum and so on. We're really talking about small differences and these small differences would also be subject to your environment and your conditions that you've got. So, so I'm struggling a little bit with adding enough information so you get value out of this video, but also not being too precise to potentially lead you in the wrong direction. I do want you to just take the guiding principles and apply to your own environment. I don't want you to just copy and paste exactly what I'm doing because it might not work for you. Maybe this plant spotlight series is just really going to turn into more of a visual feast uh, rather than being super informative. But if you're after more information, I've got two plant tours where I show you the plants and the environment that they actually grow in. Like this one doesn't live here. Um, it, it lives in my bedroom. So just have a look at the houseplant tours if you want to see where these plants normally live. Um, and I've got a 
playlist with all things moss pole related as well. How to make moss poles, how to water moss poles, how to extend moss poles, how to chop and extend moss poles, and so on. So I might just leave most of the informative stuff to those in-depth tutorials, and I'll just make this like a bit of plant porn. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Anyway, let me know where you want this plant series to go. You know, what do you want to get from this? Uh, I, I know that probably you're going to say, I want to know exactly what this plant needs, but you will never get that from me. You will, I, I can't because I've seen my analytics. I know that you guys come from lots of different countries all over the globe. How could I possibly give you very precise information on what I do with my plant that's going to be applicable to all of you? So I, I don't want to lead you in the wrong direction. So sometimes I purposely keep it a little bit broad. So I apologize for that, but I hope you understand why. I think that's plenty for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and like, and I'll see you in our next video. Take care.